Welcome, welcome back everybody or welcome to Naeem's Shorts. If this is your first time or if you're an avid watcher, thank you very much for joining me today. If you haven't already, like and subscribe, get on YouTube and give us a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so then you get all the new episodes that come out as soon as they do. It'll let you know right on your phone. As you can see, we're in a slightly different area of the Dungeon of Physique Magnifique here in South San Francisco, our home at 387 Grand Avenue in South San Francisco. If you're ever in the area, please come by, play with us a little bit. Uh, we'll show you around, we'll talk shop, or just hang out. Because everyone approaches martial arts for various reasons. And I want to talk today about that idea, but more specifically, in seminars. We just recently were at the VEA Martial Arts Collaborative put on by our good friend Mike Cardenas and with help from various people including Dennis Duarte who we blame for everything including this show. Um, but wonderful people, great guys, they put together a whole bunch of masters from different arts, from different walks of lives and put them together in one room and they give each one of them an opportunity to teach and to share their art. And folks, that's just a wonderful thing. Even if your only purpose for going is to be around like-minded people with great attitudes, no egos, just sharing, then it's a perfect place to be, even if you're not a martial artist. Because we do have people that go there that have no experience in martial arts whatsoever but they get exposed to so many different arts and who knows, maybe they find one that they really, really like. Now, why then do the rest of us go? What is the reason behind why we go, why you go, why these people gather together from far off places? We met a guy that drove four hours to be there in Manteca just for the collaborative and he had a wonderful, wonderful time. Not to mention he took a few raffle prizes which were, let's say I was jealous of them. <laughs> I really wanted to take those home. But we had a great time and he had a great time. So it made me wonder, what brings people there? Now, some of us go because we hear a name, some obscure martial artist, maybe a hermit that finally is being pushed out of their home and put in front of people because sometimes that's how they get out there. Somebody else forces them in front of them and they teach and they share and that's who you want to go see. Like when you go to a concert and you go to see the headliner, but then the opening act, the opening band turns out to be amazing as well and all of a sudden you have a new favorite group. And a lot of times that's what happens. We go for a certain name, but then we see all the other people and what they have to share. And we fall in love with something new. We rediscover this fire to learn something other than what we know. Now that's a major reason for why people go. But is that the only reason? Some of us do go there to socialize, to meet up with friends, to say hi to people we haven't seen in a while. Uh, some of us go there to promote our names. I know Rick is shameless. He shows up just to schmooze with people so he can get more guests for the Kali Conversation Show. I'm ashamed of him and he's a big ass. So we kind of go with it. But it really is the shamelessness of him and why he goes there. Because he doesn't really participate, while me, I participate in as much as I possibly can. Because I want to see how well do I understand what people are giving out. And can I understand beyond what's being shown. And then every once in a while, you get these gems. Um, recently, uh, this last VEA, um, this past weekend, uh, our good friend Jasper, Guru Jasper, um, he showed up, he was invited, and I'm still blown away by what he showed. It wasn't anything elaborate. He shared his art with everybody and everybody got a sense, but he showed the elaborate things first and then went to simple, simple, and then got everyone engaged in a fulcrum idea. Now, I'm going to show it to you right now. Now, Guru, I'm very sorry, I'm not going to do what you showed justice, 
This is just what I recall. Please don't hold it against me. Because it was a very simple idea, but the way that you portrayed it, the way that you showed it, that was the profound nugget that we took away from it. It's the process that he used to teach this that really stood out to us. And, and I think everybody else felt the same way because there was a large gathering around this man when he started moving him and Guru Gregory. Now, it's a simple idea. Oh wait, I don't need two sticks. I don't need one. See, I already messed it up already. And what it is, the fulcrum is the idea that you create tension with your hand, with your empty hand, so you can generate a lot of force without having to swing. Why? Everything close, everything near the body, because you don't always have the space to do so. And the idea behind it is that as this travels down, you're compressing that tension, and eventually it lets go, and it generates force. Now, again, I'm not showing it the best I can. There was four different strikes. This was the first one, where it's just generating force through that tension. You're not pushing as much as you're creating a fulcrum. This hand moves less than the other one does around it because you're trying to create that force through it and then release it. This hand isn't pushing. It's just there to keep it from moving freely until that tension is released and then it goes on to something else, just as the second one. Now, this one, again, I'm not moving the hand. It is the body that moves. The hand stays where it is at all times. And what you're doing is that you're creating this motion here. And that's what generates small circle, generates a lot of force. And that's the idea. Now, I did it out here. He later explains, once everybody starts getting the concept, that it's the body, the tightness of the mechanics that really drives it home. Where it's not about this hand pushing, it's not about forcing it, but rather allowing everything, your entire body to compress from this fulcrum, this contact point, this pivot, if you want to call it that. And for me, that resonated so much because that's what we teach in what we do. We teach about the mechanics, we teach about it. And here's the thing, even though it's something that we've seen before in another way, it's the presentation that stood out and allowed me to understand even deeper the things that were being portrayed and not to mention how I can now use this idea to generate more power for myself because now I'm really emphasizing everything that goes on in the body. That wasn't a big swing. It was my body moving, all the mechanics working together. This is my derivative of that idea because again, Guru, I haven't studied well enough with you to be able to show it the way that you do. But these are the things that we take away. And again, these are little nuggets of gold that we don't expect. But when we see it, they stick with us. So I propose an idea. Can we change our mentality? Or can we decide our mentality prior to reaching a seminar? to say that instead of trying to learn some secret technique that was gonna defeat all my enemies, because I used to think that, I used to think that I'm gonna go to these things and I'm gonna get some great technique that I can use. Instead, why don't we try to focus on the little things, the process of teaching? Mike Cardenas, the host of this event, stated that his teaching style has changed and evolved because he watches all these other instructors, he sees them teach a certain way, even though it's something he's seen before, even it's something that a lot of us have already seen, but it is the way that it comes across, the way that they present it to the public that changes the mentality and the understanding behind it. And he is still, even though he's ranked, he's a master, he has his own school, he's still evolving the way that he teaches. And if that's not humility, well, then I don't know what is. And isn't that, as martial artists, what we want to portray is humility? So why not start it off in the learning process? 
and let us approach these events with an open mind, not looking to critique anybody, not looking to say, oh, that's crap, or that would never work, but really, really search for that little bit, whether it's the process, whether it's the idea, whether it's a word that could possibly enhance the things that you already do, whether you're a white belt or a grandmaster. That way, we get the entire group, we get the whole place really sharing and truly growing. Because ultimately, that's why we do what we do. That's why I put these videos out. It isn't to teach some technique. It isn't to give you an exercise. It's to give you an idea to take what you already know and enhance it beyond any of your expectations. Because again, for me and for the people around me, there is no peak, there is no end. There is just growth. And as long as we can continue growing, we're gonna have fun doing it because I love what I do. I enjoy meeting different people. I like talking to masters and grandmasters and getting ideas. Oh, sorry, I'm getting a little teary right now. This is an emotional situation for me. <laughs> Oh my God. Now, at this particular seminar, there was about eight instructors, right? And I was helping Kuya Dan teach his section of it. And the only thing that I kind of regret uh, of that situation is that at the same time, there were some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructors that were going on on the other mat that I was unable to work with. <laughs> and when I went to introduce myself, they said the very same thing about Kuya Dan stuff. They're like, man, we really wanted to work with you guys, but we were teaching at the same time. And again, you come across things that you're not familiar with, things that you haven't seen before, and all of a sudden you're getting just a taste. And some people, that's all it takes for them to get hooked that little taste, because they were doing some crazy things on that mat that I could only glimpse every once in a while and I would have loved to be involved in all that because it was no gi needed and people were on the floor, they were doing techniques, they were moving about, they were shit. It was wonderful to watch. It was a great exercise and I wish I could have been a part of it. Hopefully next one, they'll come back and I'll be able to join them. And hopefully now that you know that the BEA is putting these cross-training events on all the time, look out for them. They're on Facebook. Look out for Mike Cardenas. Ourselves will repost that information because there will be more events. And who knows? You might find something you truly love, but you'll definitely, definitely have a fun, fun time with a lot of great, like-minded people in a familial environment. All right, well, that's my plug for the VEA. They are good friends, we do love them. Mike Cardenas, you're the man, and we can't wait for the next event. We hope you can join us then. But if you don't, at least join me for the next video. Like and subscribe and share. Until then, three, two, one, cut!